Thank you very much, guys. Joined here by Deft from EDG after winning versus H2K. And of course, a question on everyone's minds in that after that very hyped matchup in the bottom lane, what was it like to lane versus Forgiven and Vander? 그 Deft 선수 우선 승리를 축하드립니다. 그 이번 H2K 경기에서 많은 사람들이 Deft 선수와 포기브 선수의 바텀 라인전을 많이 기대하고 이제 지켜봤었는데 한 어떻게 한 경기를 해보니까 포기브 선수와의 라인전이 어땠었나요? 어... 일단 픽 자체가 저희가 좀 2대2는 좀 불리한데 갱홍이나 그런 면에서 더 좋은 픽을 뽑았는데 처음에 1레벨 저희가 뭐 그냥 1레벨 저희가 더 잘해서 그냥 라인전을 쉽게 풀어간 거 같은데 저희가 좀 무리해서 갱 한번 당한 것 때문에 좀 게임이 길어졌던 것 같아요. Uh, for the picks, uh, our team's champions, we were kind of a weaker champion compared to H2K's, but at level one, we had a good team fight, we played better, and the game was supposed to go pretty easily from that point on, but later in the game, later in the lane, we got double killed by Israel, so I think the game got kind of messy from that point. It was quite messy, but you guys pulled out the win and very, very convincingly so. Uh, Deft, you already have an MSI title. It is your third appearance at Worlds. You have had a fantastic season in the LPL with EDG. How big are your chances to take the Summoner's Cup home this year? 뎁 선수 이제 올해가 롤드컵 세 번째 진출이고 이제 작년에 MSI 우승됐고 올해 LPL 썸머 때 정말 완벽한 기록으로 이제 우승까지 차, 이제 거머쥐었었는데요. 올해 그럼 소환사 컵을 들기까지 우승을 할수 할수 있는 화, 확률은 어떨까요? 어 일, 저희가 일단 롤드컵 오기 전까지 되게 자신 있게 왔었는데 처음 경기에서 좀 많이 안 좋은 모습을 보이면서 지금 피드백을 많이 최대한 많이 하면서 고쳐가고 있어서 일단 저번 MSI도 미국에서 열렸었는데 저희가 우승을 했었거든요. 그래서 일단 미국에서 롤드컵도 열렸으니까 좀 우승할 수 있을 것 같아요. Before we came to Worlds, we were actually full of confidence and we felt really, really good. But after we came here, we had a really bad performance at our first game. So after that, our first game, we had a lot of uh, feedbacks going on and we're trying to fix those mistakes. And last year at MSI, we won MSI at the, at the States, at Florida. So now we're back at NA. I think we could also have, make some good memories here at World Championship. All right, we're well, looking forward to that. A victory here for EDG and well on their way to get out of groups. And our analysts have a lot to talk about. So let's check in with Dash and the gang. Thank you very much, Shox. EDG picking up a win there. Gentlemen, we had talked about them needing to make a statement in this game and pulling out something dominant. My question to you is, did they do that? Not really. Not really. <laughs> you want them to bounce back in a big way, but they're not doing that right now. They're still not really showing a bunch of cohesion, either through the draft or through their actual in-game play, and they're not looking like a LPL powerhouse that we expected to see. And to speak to your point, the reason why that is is because the moves that EDG was making to accelerate the game were based off of H2K's mistake. H2K would just make an aggressive, an aggressive play that just wasn't very good, and then EDG would respond, react, and then punish after that, as opposed to what we saw out of cleaner games like AHQ's previous game or SKTs, where they're able to actually create their own moves by themselves and get the advantages without the need of the opponent messing up. Yeah, but I will say, I think that EDG looked a bit more comfortable back to their LPL form. You know, Mouse is on his most played champion in the LPL, Aurelia, and they have the comfort factor with the scout, where he roams top pretty early in the game. They did that the same thing in the finals. It got them in an early lead. And also, if you look at the macro game they're playing right now, it looks a lot more like the EDG style, where they play slow and methodical, challenge every round. And right now, it is just the 2v2 top. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing that you mentioned there, Clement, is the scout factor helping out Mouse in the top lane. Because if this was game one, day one, that probably would have been a kill as far as Lee Sin sneaking into that brush. But the Cinder Roam comes at exactly the right time, and it ends up being double buffs. Not to mention, it felt like Otto Omni stuck around a bit too long. And for that play beforehand, Jankus was waiting in that brush, almost, ca almost completed the recall. I think he was expecting the Nidalee to actually be showing up because Nidalee was MIA, but they didn't look at the map. They didn't see the mid lane ward where Scout was moving up to the top side. And as a jungler, when you're trying to gank a Syndra, that's always going to be disaster. Right, so that play happened at eight minutes into the game, and then it felt 
like nothing. You were exactly as you mentioned. The EDG wasn't making proactive moves. We stalled out. We saw Ryu able to put some split push pressure on and definitely spread the map out. But EDG just didn't look decisive until 31 minutes when exactly again, as you mentioned, we see H2K make the aggressive move. EDG respond and take advantage. And there's going to be a lot of mechanical misplays here. But initially, Silence Rumble, he's going to get ganked by, or he's going to get ganked by the Vladimir. And the equalizer is going to come down. He's going to wish he's going to have this later. Yeah, both made major team fight ultimates were burned by H2K on a fairly tanky Aurelia for Mouse. I think Mouse played this spectacularly, but if we're thinking about the way EDG would want to close out the game, this was H2K giving it to him. EDG did react in the proper way, but if they are going to be the dominant team we're expecting them to be, they need to be able to set up those plays before it happened. They played it great, Mouse played great in that situation, but it was H2K giving them to him in that set. I mean, you can see it right there on the gold graph. I mean, th there's very little change or increase in gold differential between that, you know, 11 minute mark and that 30 minute mark. It was after that fight where they're able to pick up the Baron and then use that Baron to really push down the objectives that they could accelerate the game. And I think it was because EDG was just unable to respond to the lane assignment that H2K had. Vladimir was able to 1v2 the dual lane throughout most of the time, while Syndra was able to hold down the dual lane. So dual lane versus mid laner every single time, and nothing is really being created except for the pressure of Irelia and Nidalee. All right, let's talk about that scout factor one more time as we're going to award him with player of the game this time around. Yeah, I think like he played a lot better. I, the Syndra matchup, of course, in the Vladimir is not that good. Vladimir really does, you can't get lane kill pressure on him, and he does have that silent effect. But if you look at the game, he put a lot of pressure on Forgiven, forced around him lane multiple times, and slowly whittled down the game for them. All right, well, oh. You got somebody you want to I think it's the end important there? to say that he did have a good debut since it was Pawn in for the first two games, and we're seeing some of the reasons why they played him here. Pawn didn't have the same type of presence on the map, even if he may have been a little bit better laner and looked a bit more impressive in team fights. And I think that's one of the big reasons Scout gets player of the game. And they end week one with a victory. That's the most important part of it all. Stick around because it's Albus Knox Luna versus G2 right after the break. Clear love has in 13 run pages. No, 13 run pages. I, he's so ahead. I don't understand his genius. Which this is a big mistake by Van der Kamp. Oh my God! Dude. The auto attack grenade, and that's going to be first blood. Ryu still just causing a ruckus here in the back line, but good stun from Scout. Massive pulverize. Ryu just still can't do enough damage. Ryu against the world. Goes clear up, exhausted, but Primal Search Spear lands in the back of the vampire's head and mouse going nuts in the back line. Forgiven's gonna die out of one in trouble. EDG, their first truly decisive victory here at World 2016 against H2K. Dare.